All right, everybody, here we are publishing two videos today. Two videos today. The second one is all about comparing the Solomon Speedcross 4 to the Solomon Speedcross 5. I don't quite understand what's going on because somehow I got my hands on this Speedcross 5 early. It's not available yet in a lot of places. It's not even on the Solomon website yet, and it's almost February 2019 right now. So I've actually already put, I believe, 70 miles, right under 70 miles into the Speedcross 5, and so my full review is already available. Upper right hand corner, go watch that after you watch this if you want a really detailed uh, analysis of the Speedcross 5. But this video is all about comparing the 4 to the 5 what are the differences? What advancements did they make? And yes, by the end, I will tell you, okay, I would put my money here as opposed to here. And for one last comparison between the four and the five, I just want to give my legs and my feet a little bit more muscle memory between how these two feel. So I'm going to go up Mount Morrison here. It's like, I think it's about 1500 feet of climbing, maybe a little more. And it's snowy, rocky, mud, perfect for the speed cross lineup. All right, come on. Welcome to the studio. Welcome to the studio. Okay, discussing and comparing the Solomon Speedcross 5 to the 4 here in the studio. Did you know that the first Speedcross came out in 2006? 2006, so what is that, 13 years ago basically? Pretty amazing. They were expecting to sell basically about a thousand pairs that first year. Well, fast forwarding to the present, they now sell over a million pairs of speed cross running shoes in Europe alone. So I don't know what their global sales are now, but that's a pretty impressive number. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there for you. Like they have come a long way since 2006 and it's exciting to see the iterations. So the versions, and that's another way to say verge, the iterations of the shoes um, over the years. And I wish, oh, how amazing I would love so someday, someday I will get my hands on a pair of the Solomon Speedcross 1. And a few quick specs. Most of you already know this because I've said it so many times, but the Solomon Speedcross 4 and the 5 both have a 10 millimeter drop, so that's pretty high. And they both weigh basically 11 ounces. The 4 is a little lighter in my sizing, a little lighter in my sizing. Uh, so 11 ounces, which is 320 grams. The Speed Cross lineup is a heavier running shoe on the trails. It's definitely not in the lightweight category. And I think they do that on purpose to really make sure you are getting a shoe that is beefy and bulky at times in order to attack the mountains. I don't know how else to say it. This is an attack the mountain type running shoe. And the moment you've all been waiting for, what are the differences between the four and the five? I've nailed it down to three and there's probably more, but I am focusing on three for this video. The upper has changed, the upper has changed, the collar, the collar of the shoe, so around the heel, I'll talk more about that, and then the outsole. And it's oh, it's an exciting change to the outsole. Uh, so let's start with the upper. 
I'm just gonna call it on the Speed Cross 4 a rip stop material. I don't know the official terminology for this material, but it's it feels like a rip stop in order to, I think their, their idea was you're gonna be going over rocks, boulders. You don't want the upper to tear uh, in the middle of a run or over time. Compared to the 5, this is a much more uh, softer, more supple, if I can use that word, uh, more flexible upper, especially through the toe box. I prefer this upper on the 5 compared to the 4. And in the 4, uh, if you didn't wash the upper or if you didn't soak it in a little bit of water after a long day in the mountains, it got really stiff from the mud, the sweat, uh, just all the dirt, the, the dust. And it, I noticed over time, like the upper continued to get stiffer and stiffer. And it, I actually wouldn't, I wouldn't reach for it out of the closet because I was like, ah, that's just going to feel too stiff. So anyway, I think this is a big improvement to the five, a more soft and flexible upper. It feels really good. And I, I'm excited to take it out in the summertime as well. It's winter in Colorado right now. So uh, anyway, that is a big change to the upper. So at the end of my run today, you saw it on the video when I was wearing the four on my right foot and the five on my left foot. The biggest difference I noticed was through the heel. And what is happening here is that the outer wall of the five is taller. So is the back. So this is the collar of a shoe, just so you know some terminology. This is called the collar around, it wraps around your ankle. And here in the back on the five, this is a taller uh, collar in the back, a taller collar in the back of this Speed Cross 5. And I noticed it today when I had both one on one foot and one on the other. You can see, can you see, let me see here. Can you see the... And so that is a big difference between the four and the five. And I, yes, I prefer the five's collar. It's just a little more of a secure fit. And that might be part of the reason why this shoe weighs a little bit more. There's a little more material built into the collar, through the heel, right there especially. And oh, when you're grinding up that mountain and it's steep and it's hard and you want to start walking, like I just feel nice that nice lockdown feel with that collar in the back and moving on to the outsole i don't know if this is the most exciting update but it might have to be the lugs are bigger they're wider on the speed cross 5 they're wider and guess what i felt it today i felt it on the second lap it, not as much in the snow not as much in the snow but once i got the mud i'm telling you these wider lugs made a difference and they're ever so slightly deeper, just a little deeper than the fours. Oh, good job, Solomon, increasing the size and the depth of the lugs on the bottom of the fives. My big question now, though, is will they make them even bigger in the six or the seven? These lugs, of course, they're going to want feedback from all of us. Well, I don't know if they can go much bigger but I'm telling you, that is the that is the, another huge difference between the four and the five. Like the four is a good uh, pattern for the lugs on the outsole, but I'm telling you, the lugs on these fives, oh, mwah, mwah, mwah. I'm telling you, it's a good thing. It's a good thing, you two. In summary, in summary, the Speed Cross Four, a hundred dollars right now. Hundred dollars. Actually, I've seen it a little cheaper and a little more expensive. So a hundred dollars for the Solomon Speed Cross Four. The Solomon Speed Cross Five is $130. I still don't know how I got my hands on this shoe so early. It doesn't appear to be for sale everywhere yet. $130, and I think you can find it even cheaper in some places. I would buy the Solomon Speed Cross 5 in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. The 4 is amazing. The 4 is amazing. Great shoe. I put some serious miles and vertical gain in this shoe in 2018. It's a great shoe great shoe but this guy it's got some good updates now if you are looking to pinch pennies yeah go with the four go with the four in fact i think i even saw this guy for like 80 bucks just got to look in the right places so anyway that's my thought on price if you have the money i would say bump it up and just just bite the bullet and go with the five for so many different reasons but maybe most especially for that outsole pattern and geometry of the lugs and the depth It'll make a difference if you're in muddy, snowy, uh, 
rocky conditions wherever you're running off trail it's just a bomber of a shoe. And yes, through that heel, I was pretty skeptical, Solomon, pulling the shoes out of the box. The heel looked a little too beefy, a little too bulky, but sure enough, like, it fe I feel very protected, and yes, it gives me confidence to bomb down the mountains. It just does. I don't know how else to say it. It just does. And then the upper, just soft, more supple. I don't know how they will improve it in the future, this upper. Maybe they could start experimenting a little bit more with uh, waterproofing that is not full-on Gore-Tex, but uh, just a little more because my feet did get soaked today. So if I would have been going for like 15 to 20 miles, ugh, I don't know, like I in no fresh socks, like I would have been a little cold out there. So that anyway, that might be a way to improve in the future. Solomon. Thank you everyone for watching this comparison of the Solomon Speedcross 4 versus the Solomon Speedcross 5. I hope you learned something. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button. And yes, if you have trail running buddies that are looking for a solid, aggressive 2019 trail running shoe, send them this video. Let them know, like, listen, if you re are ready to attack the mountains, this is the shoe for them. All right, you're amazing. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. See beauty, work hard, and love each other.